So hi, good folk. Uh, welcome to another stream where I'm um, going to do some open source contribution to a Rust project because um, I like programming in Rust and I can't do it for, uh, for work, so I do it in my spare time. Uh, this stream, I'm going to see if uh, I'm going to try to put together a PR to a project called GitUI, which is a uh, terminal UI for Git. It looks like this, approximately. Um, I can fire it up in my terminal after and let you see the more updated version. Uh, it's basically like this still, but yeah. There are some few, a few updates since that was made, I think. And what I'm going to tackle the, tonight is basically moving the config uh, to default to the, well, basically what's stored in xdg config home, which is the default config directory on Linux systems. At the moment, the project uses the cache directory uh, instead of the config directory, which could lead to some undesired behavior as the cache directory will uh, will um, or rather it could be purged at any moment basically if the computer or the operating system uh, thinks it has to free up some space uh, yeah so let's see Let's start off by creating a new branch. Uh, what am I doing? Branch. Um, let's just call this uh, uh, move default config directory. Yep. Let's jump over to C line and my terminal. Uh, let's just do a cargo run in here. Yeah, so we're waiting for the file lock to be released, which is held by C line at the moment because it's doing um, a bit of background work, but it's fine. Uh, it's basically doing the same thing that this would do. So uh, that is not a problem. Do, 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 do. Waiting for compilation. Okay, so we can have a look at what we're where we're at at the moment. So currently, the default uh, uh, there is a function here called get app config path, which is used throughout the uh, application to get the place to store config and user preferences. However, it actually fetches the cache directory instead of the config directory. So the easy fix here would be to just change this to use the config directory and we'd be home free. But the problem is, as far as I can see, that some users have already started using GitUI and their config will presently be in the cache directory. So we need to have um, an upgrade path for them. And we could do two things. We could uh, try to look in the config directory first. And if whatever we're searching for isn't there, move over to the cache directory. But that's information that's not readily available because this just returns a path. It doesn't return the thing that you're looking for directly. So the consumers of this function, they don't know intuitively which path they're receiving, the config path or the cache path. So there's no easy way. So we'd have to change all of the places where this function is used to be able to have the fallback logic work. And that's not desirable. So my second idea is just to migrate the directory at launch. So basically we'll check the cache directory 
if it if uh, if the directory uh, if the cache uh, direct if the git ui directory in the cache in the cache directory exists move it to the config directory uh, at launch and then it will probably just work there is one caveat though which is you can enable logging and the logs also go uh, are are also stored in this uh, config path in quotation marks by default which means that if we just move this to use the config dir instead the config directory will generate the logs inside of the config directory which feels not right to me so uh, actually set up logging right here it gets the config path and then pushes the git, uh, git UI log. And that doesn't seem right, right? So, what I propose is we should split out, uh, create a new function which returns the cache directory. We could just make it local in here, but I kind of want to leave it open for further expansion. So, get, something like get, get cache path which basically returns what this returns now. And we change this to return the config cache directory. Uh, oh, sorry, the config directory. And then when the app launches, it checks the cache directory to see if there are any other files than the dot log files. And if there are, move those. And if there are only log files, don't do anything basically and move the all all non log files to the to the config directory basically i think this is the only place where it actually uses the log so i think we'll be good we can just do like a search here maybe dot log okay uh yeah so it references the cache directory Okay, so we shouldn't change that because then we have to change. Yeah, and it doesn't feel right to, to log to the config directory. It should log to, for example, the cache. Uh, that's probably fine. Okay, so let's change this. Uh, and also, uh, we have the UI running here. There aren't any um, staged changes, so it's not very interesting, but you have, uh, let's just make some change, uh, yeah. For example, uh, we could just make this, and uh, let's just change uh, this one, for example. Uh, get app cache path, returns a cache tur, fail to find OS cache tur. Yep, all that seems fine. And this should instead be get config dir. Oops. Um, fail to find OS config directory, oops, like so. And if we now go over here to get UI, I think it should, hmm, oh, there we go. Uh, so it shows, shows you the changes, you can stage the file, uh, you're able to commit the message, they even added, um, cursor support recently, which is nice. It's coming along nicely. Uh, ah, and also amend support, actually. So I guess control A. Ooh, that's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, sure, that works. Uh, I've bound um, my Tmux, uh, oh, what's it called? Command key? No. Um, ah, what's it called? Or uh, the, the, um, oh man, it completely escapes me. Uh, uh, the, the key combination to start making commands to, to Tmux is bound to command A, uh, for A. It usually come, uh, not command A, it control A. It's usually control B, I think, but I've re rebound it. But, um, and I, I know that's a pretty common uh, setup, but it's not really a problem. Um, 
You just have to hit Command A twice. Control A twice, I mean. Uh, anyway, yep, yeah, so you're going to have a look at the changes. You're going to have a look at the log. Uh, you can stash stuff. You can watch uh, or look at your sta stashes. Um, yeah. So you can remove and add hunks. So we can just remove this part and this part, for example, which is nice. So yeah, that's the UI in a nutshell. So let's have a look at the code again. So we've split these up, which is nice. And we'll change the logging thing to be get cache path like so. So that still works as it should. And all the other references that use get config path, this one right here, uh, they will now use the correct path, which is config directory. But we also need the migration path. Um, so let's have a look at that. Uh, first of all, I think we are going to have a look at uh, if we let's create another one of these and just uh, let's jump into dot uh, nope, that's not the one. Uh, library caches git UI, that's the one. And have a look in here. So we've got two files, the, the log and the theme file. So what we want to do when the application launches, we wanted to move the, the theme file to the new directory, uh, the new location, but leave the log file here. So, We are uh, hmm, I'm gonna leave this in here, I think. Uh, migrate config directory. Hmm. Migrate config. Yes. That's probably fine. Uh, result of none. Yeah, that's probably good. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so let's do the cache path, which is get app cache path like so and we'll just return the question mark like so and we'll also do the config path oops where do we go uh, here we go config um uh how's it do this again uh, <laughs> is it in the FS module? Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Um, file, oh, entries, no. Files, no. List, nope. This is doing, no, but I can probably do this directly on the cache path. Oh, man, I'm, I'm sorry about this ty these typos. I'm still not used to my new keyboard, and it's throwing me off quite too often. Let's see. Uh, this is not recognize. Yeah, this is path buff, and this is unknown. Man, I hate it when it does this. Okay. Um, path buff. Hi. Children. Hold on. I don't remember. Um, let's see. Rust. It, uh, um, it rate directory contents. Let's see. Read there. That's the one. So I'm guessing that there's a read there right here. Yes. Uh, 
Uh, so let's just do four uh, path in this one. So this returns an I result of f as reader. For just an iterator over the entries within a directory. We instances of I result, new errors may be encountered after an iterator is initially constructed. This is an alias of f is reader, yes. So reader might fail and the entry might fail too, that makes sense. Um, can I do anything like uh, no arguments? Just take self, right? There's no filtering, basically. I could. Nah, I'm just gonna. If let some uh, path, let's just call it path. <clears throat> I was freaking out now because um, you know what? Let's call this a um, dear entry. Call this an entry, um, like so. Now oh, this is not being typed either. Matt, what's up with the typing today? Uh, so this is a dear entry. Let's just look that up then. Press dear entry. Oop. Uh, entry. Uh, yep. Entries returned by the reader iterator. Yes. We can get the path, get the path buff. That's easy. Get the, again, get the metadata. That's not interesting. File type returns the file type that for the file that this entry points at. Okay. What does file type look like? This directory is file is in link. Okay, that's not interesting to us. Not really, I think. I don't think Git UI creates directories yet. So we'll just look at files. File name. Yeah, basically the standard stuff. Uh, returns the bare file name for this directory entry without any of the leading path components. Yeah, so this should just re uh, return the last last thing. So let's go to multiple on that one. Uh, let's do another if actually. Mm, a lot of nesting in here now. Should I maybe do this differently? I'll leave it at this for now, and we'll have a look at refactoring after. So if the entry dot file name uh, yeah, so that's an OS string. Do we need to convert this, convert this to make it workable? From slices, do 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 do. <clears throat> okay. What is the best way to do this? 
Should I just use two string? Because in this not uh, yeah. What is up with that? I wonder. Can we do this, dear entry? Sure, import it. Not really sure why it's so bad at. Um, wow, what is this? It's complaining all over the place. If let something. Don't you recognize the f like standard for that point? Uh, let's see. To cargo run. Oh, cargo is actually okay. Yeah, now it's complaining about the uh, this one right here. That's fine. Okay, that clears all that up. Hmm. That's just annoying, but okay. So I, I think to string is implemented for this. Uh, let's jump back to OS string. Uh, let's see into string converts to a string if it contains valid unicode data on failure ownership of the original OS string is returned right i think this is basically what i want so it tries to Does support to stir. Yields a string slice. And turns an option. The replace with a replacement character, which I'm guessing is the, yeah, the question mark. Right, so. Uh, let's have a look at this. I think I'm going to use the... Uh, let's do is... So we got a sum and a sum and a sum. That's a lot of uh, maybe if we do let path, uh, we'll just set that as dear entry. which is the result, and we okay that, then we map uh, the, uh, the entry, uh, we have to do like this, entry, and we try to get entry dot file name, and make that as, and make that to a string, Two string lossy. Uh, let's see, what's that do? Oops. Converts an OS string to a cow. <laughs> uh, calling no division percent strings, blah, blah, blah. Two string lossy from an OS string with invalid Unicode. 
forced to complicate example setting up some blah blah blah. blah. That's a copy on right, isn't it? Uh, let's see. Two string lossy. Any none? Yeah, this is probably what I want instead of two stir. Yeah, maybe I think I want this instead. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's go with the lossy version. I think that is. I think that's what we want. So uh, let's remove this again. Um, this is maybe an okay. Uh, that's what <clears throat> threw it off. Uh, let's see. So if we can get the dir entry and we get the file name, uh, we could, let's see, that returns as now a string. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> the path is now entry dot file name to lossy. Uh, and if it ends with dot log, we should just skip it. So if it does not end with log, We should move it to the config. Should probably also check that this. Can I check if this is a file? No, because you can. This is a file path. I think I can get that from the met metadata of the entry, right? So we have a metadata over here. And if we can look in here, we can see that we, I think we also have the extension maybe, Ex extension. Ugh. Oh. Don't we have that on the path though? No, apparently not. Okay. <clears throat> Clearly, I, I, I thought I remember that there being like a, uh, returns the file type for this metadata. Yeah. So it doesn't end with, with log. Uh, we should just move it. So FS copy. Uh, yes, there is no move because we want to copy then remove. Is that the one? No, it's rename. That's the one. Yeah. A file or directory to a new name replacing the original file if it File if two already exists, right? Uh, this function, rename function on Unix, and the move file x function with the move file replace existing flag on Windows. Behavior when both from and to exist differs. On Unix, if from, from is a directory, two must also be in 
empty directory. If from is not a directory, to must also be not a directory. In contrast, in Windows, from can be anything, but must, but to must not be a directory. Right. <laughs> this may change in future. Right. So, um, let new name be config path. Uh, to turn off notifications in the operating system. Uh, let's see, let's just do not disturb, like so. Let's just add this type in here too. File stem, that's the... <clears throat> Stem non extension portion of the file name, yeah. So that's config path uh, plus if you push path dot file name. Uh, what's path right here? Oh, that's a string, right. Hmm, should we maybe convert this to a path too? That we kind of might need that to. Actually. Directly from an OS string. That is actually what we want. Entry, the file name. Well, with log path to file name is actually an option okay That's not what I want. I was a complaint about this. Can I borrow immutable? Okay. That's fine. Um, so we push this file name onto that one and we re rename this from path to new name. Probably, probably fails, we'll just do this. Yep. <clears throat> so this will move the files. from the cache path to the config path. Right, this doesn't work because we mutate the original variable up here. Right. If you 
probably read that inside the loop. Uh, let's do that. <laughs> as late as possible. Yeah, what am I doing here? I'm I'm using this, so why am I assigning it a new? That doesn't make any sense. Let's do this. And this is just config path. There we go. It mutates in place. That's the whole point. Yeah. Okay. That looks right. Now, let's just add this to the main function. Uh, let's see. I'm probably just going to do that immediately. Migrate config. Return any errors. Not really too f a fan of having to run this at every launch, but I don't think it's really a problem. This is basically a run, lang run, uh, long running process. It's not something you run <clears throat> and just for a short task. Uh, you usually start it up and use it for a while. So I don't think it's it's a huge problem, and hopefully we'll be able to remove this in like a few versions, and only keep it around for a short while while we do the migration. And basically just say, if you're a user that's coming from like 0.6.0 and you're migrating directly to 1.0, for example, um, yeah, the config has changed. Uh, you'll just have to bear with us as it, as it will reset, basically. I hope that's, I hope that works out. Yeah. So. Uh, my great config. So in theory, if you open my terminal again, uh, we have these files in here. Uh, we can also just add like a test thing, like so. And it should afterwards show up in, I think, uh, my home directory slash dot config slash git UI. So let's see what happens, I guess. Go over here, loop cargo R to run it, and we get some errors. Okay. Oh, quite a few actually. Uh, unused import. Yeah, we can fix that. Uh, can I just run, um, oh, let's see, cargo fumped. Does that fix anything? Probably not. Uh, dear entry. There we go. Unused imports. Yes. Trait is not implemented for none error. On the file name. Line 216. What's this return? Config path push. Oh, this is the. Okay, why is it? Okay, whatever. Uh, let's see. Requiring because of the requirements of the impul, blah, 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 blah. The trait standard error is not implemented for standard option non error. Right, because this is actually. Option, right, this is not a result. Uh, there are two options here, basically. We either, because path to file name oh, crap, is returns an option. 
returns none if the path terminates in dot dot. Right? So if it does that, it returns none. Should it just do if let sum here too? But we're already, we already know that it does not. Kind of, I'm kind of tempted to just do unwrap here. I'm gonna do an unwrap, and then we're just gonna add a comment here. Um, check uh, um, if statement above. Um, ensures, ensures that the file name does not return a none. Uh, no, no, let's use these. Let's leave, leave that in. And yeah, let's see what else it complains about. Um, oh, come on. There we go. The non error and <clears throat> mismatch type. Yeah, it doesn't return a result. Right, right, right. So we'll just do one of these. There we go, and that should be it, I think. Let's do cargo R. No such file or directory, OS error two. Okay, that's interesting. So something doesn't work. Uh, let's see. These both use get app cache and app config. And both of them make sure that all the directories are created. They are not returning the errors. Question is though, they didn't move anything. Uh, nope, they're all still there. And if we go over here, um, do we have a config get UI directory? No. Okay. No such file or directory, it says. Which line might that be? Get app config path. Push that path. Hmm. I am a bit uncertain. So let's try 
putting in a log here. Um, let's see. Considering, I'll just put some brackets in here. Uh, let's see. Let's just use this, and we'll use the path like so. Jump back here. We run this again, but with the L flag, which enables logging, like so. And let's see if we can get any useful answers now. Okay, let's have a look at the log. Considering theme.run. Okay, so it starts out with that one. Does it do it in reverse order, maybe? So it manages to print considering. So if we move this here, let's see how that works. I was still considering it. So is it down here? Is it a rename? It's gotta be path. What do you link to? It's the... Oh! No, wait. No, that's right. That's strange. Hmm. No such file or directory. Hmm, so strange. Still claiming to be considering the file, which I find strange, once again. Is it really the rename that's... Oh man, oh man. Am I blind or what? Uh, it says right here, considering thing not run. This path is just the file name itself. It's not the entire path. Right. -ta. So, this. Yeah, I just used the file name. Why do I do that though? Why did I think that was a good idea? This is a dir entry. Uh, I think we have that open. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Dir entry, right? Can we just get the we can get the path. Returns the full path. Yes. File of this entry, yes. And that is a path buff. So why am I doing this again? <laughs> <coughs> so instead of doing this, I'm just gonna do uh, rather entry dot path which will do the same thing then get the config path then I need to push the file name this is just entry the file name which returns a OS string As directly file name uh, right here 
bare file name for this directory with that, and blah, blah, blah. So we don't need to unwrap that. Uh, like so, just push that in. And then we try to rename it. Yeah, that cleans it up a bit. Let's head over here again. Let's run this. Oh, path is not a value. That is correct. Where are we using path? Here we go. So this should be the entry.path. Like so. Yes. Okay, there we go. Let's just stop this, have a look at in this directory, and it's empty. That is interesting. Okay, let's try to find the, uh, I think it's in here and here, no? No, it's not, okay. I thought that was where it would end up. Uh, no. None of these are the one. Okay. Not really sure where where they've been moved. Because I'm pretty sure that the dirs.config, let's see, where are you? Uh, this way. Config path, config dir. Uh, oh, home library preferences. Sure. Sure. It's like I would kind of prefer it to just be dot whatever. But yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Um, library preferences. This get your eye. There we go. Yeah, so the log file came along, which is not what we want at all. So let's move these back. Uh, I think I can do this and then just do slash, um, or rather preferences library. Caches, get your eye. Uh, blah 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 blah. All right. Uh, I think what I want is, uh, or rather, star. There we go. Okay, so now they're all back. So, the migration thing did not work. If it does not end with log. So the path returns as a path buff. Yes. can set the extension. Uh, let's see. Extension. An option of OS string. So extension of file if possible. Uh, let's see. You just get the RS, right. Okay, so we're using this path, okay, just twice. So not that bad. 
And here we just use the fine line directly. Well, we could just check the file name. That would probably be easier. Uh, if we do file name, that ends with log. And this can probably just be left as is. Yeah. Uh, method not found on OS string, right? I thought that would be too easy. <clears throat> I could just do to string lossy here. Um, to string lossy. Oh, you did this wrong. There we go. Let's try that. Building, building, building. I'm gonna have myself some to drink. Okay, so it runs fine. That's good. Just a second here. There we go. <clears throat> Let's just get back out of that one. Okay, so the log file is left behind. And we got the two other files over here. Nice. Okay, so that makes that work. Uh, let's see. Are we happy with how the code looks? This, I'm guessing this is just wrapping. It just looks weird. Rust. Uh, what does uh, car cargo film say? Cargo film says nice. Okay, that's fair. Uh, how about if I run it with all? Oof, that was heavier. No, it claims that is what what it wants. Okay, fine. So let's see. Migrate config. Get the cache path. Iterate through every entry. If you can fetch the entry. And the file name does not end with log. Get the config path, push the file name, and rename it. That seems pretty straightforward. And we do that at launch. I think that's fine. Uh, let's just see. I think I know that there is in the themes that MD. Oh, uh, let's see. No, that's not what I want to do. Uh, yes, that one. Default and light therm terminal terminal to change the colors of the program. You have to modify the theme that we're on. Blah blah blah. Same as log path. Okay, that's not true anymore. In color depth struct, note that the RGB colors might not be supported in every terminal. Righto. And it links to the log path. This is in themes.md. Is okay. So that's let's just jump over to the Does it link to it from here? Color theme. Automatic work in dark and light. However, you can customize everything. See themes.md. Okay, so it links to just that. Uh, it shows the UI. Same as the log path. Uh, enable logging. There you go. Okay. So we'll have to change this at config path. 
Uh, so if we do this, uh, we can change this to something else. Um, file located at comfy path um, the path uh, differs uh, depending on the operating system. Then we're going to do a dot list right here, but we're going to have to look up uh, cr oh, uh, bang creates doors like so. And we're going to have a look at this one. If that's the one we're using. Wait for them. Read the file. And we're going to have a look at this. So how did he list them in the Okay, so we can list this one. Let's make that a um, so one of these. Let's paste that in. That one in slash get UI. Bond the uh, of on. on Linux using XDG. Doesn't say on. There we go. Oh, right. So it does this actually. And then it just says, oh, right, we yeah. <laughs> don't need the, um, uh, let's see, and just change this to home. And that's also for the documentation here, I think. Yep. Slash dot config. Dot config. And has Mac first, and for Max it is this one. Uh, let's actually do this instead. Uh, changing these, paste this. Mac here and just Linux here. I think that matches what he has done here. Yes. <clears throat> slash git UI slash beam dot one. Like so. So we have a look at the preview. You can see that it works so just like we want it to. Okay. I'll also put a to do actually. And I think I'll put it right here in the main. On top of this and just say something like uh, something along the lines of um, to be removed in a future version when upgrading from o dot six dot 
x or earlier is unlikely. Right? Yeah. So if we go back to the terminal, let's just run this again. Waiting for compilation. See two changes, two change files. One in the root directory, one in the subdirectory. We can have a look at the chunks right over here. Uh, we can look at this. Uh, very nice, very nice. Um, so yeah. That looks good. Uh, can I stage all? Yeah, hey, there we go. So in theory, I could type my commit message here actually, but I'm not gonna because I prefer multi-line commit messages and those are not yet available. But they hopefully soon will be when my other PR um, gets a bit more love. Uh, <clears throat> me and Stefan are communicating and trying to figure out how we're gonna solve it uh, the best the best way to solve it. So we're probably just going to need some a bit more, more time looking at it to see if we can get it working properly. So yeah. But yes, I think this is basically what I wanted to do. So I'm not going to write the commit message on the stream. Um, it's just going to be me trying to figure out a best way to word everything, and I don't think that's too interesting. Uh, oh, he's actually live. <laughs> he just committed just now, about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, so um, I think I'm going to leave it there uh, for now. Um, this wasn't too much work in, in, uh, in reality. I think this is... I think this is good. Uh, let's see. How does everything look? Yep, yep. A bit weird with this, all of these indentations. Let's just have another look at that. Um, right down here somewhere. Migrate config. For every entry, if they are okay. Hmm. I'm not really seeing a better way to do this apart from maybe capturing all this logic inside of an iterator. Let's just have a look at how that looks before we sign off, actually. So if we instead do cache path dot uh, read here, like so. And that will give me a, an iterator with uh, result I I entries. So I can map on, over that iterator, like so. And we can say do 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 dir entry, right? That's what we call it down here. So we'll call it dir entry here. We're going to do the same up here. And Let's see, if we do dear entry dot, uh, no, wait, how do we want to do this? Do we, so instead of, hmm, let, let, let's think here. What if, instead of returning the result immediately, we, Okay, let's see. If we make, do, make it an option instead, 
then do it and then uh, this will uh, this was will give us an iterator right no so now that doesn't work um, now let's return this right like so now we'll now get the iterator directly We'll name this dir, dir entry because that's what it is. That's result. We use a dir entry. We make it on, uh, make it an option instead, like so. And then we uh, jump to this map and change this to an end. Then no, nope, that's not what we wanted either. <laughs> Um, this is now an option. Now we've got a iterator of options instead. And I kind of want to drill down further and further. on this one actually. So if we do this, and then we have this option, which is just an entry. And this entry will check if entry the file name dot to string lossy ends with log uh, we'll change this to a map maybe yeah does it, this doesn't make any sense no 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 I don't like it just just too confusing Yeah, well, what you could do is cache path, read there, return the error, map every dir entry, like so, to an OK, and then after, now we have option of dir entry. Yes, and then we could basically just do flatten on that, which is the same as just calling flat map right here, like so. And what we got left is um, uh, paths, for example. And also, we could do a filter on this and say what we got here are an entry, and if that entry dot file name dot to string lossy that ends with uh, do dot log. Let's not do include those, and we'll end it with a semicolon like so. We'll have a filter and then we could do that in here so let's do paths like so uh, this would actually be more correct to say entries and this would just be a single entry we don't need this, and we don't need this, or this, or this, or this. Uh, 
Uh, let's see, and these can go like so. And another time. That might be better, actually. So what this does in, instead, actually, is it will return error if it can't read the cache path, which is fine. That's basically what this does too. So that, that should be fine. Apart from that, it will always just try to make everything an option. And then, so this makes it, this returns an iterator now of their uh, uh, result of their entries. Then we transform those results into options with the OK function. And if those, and we do a flat map. So if it returns a sum, it will let the option through. If it returns a none, it will be removed, right? And then we do a filter. Is that right? Uh, yeah, because we flatten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is right. Yeah. So we flatten it, and the sums will be put into the iterator, and the nuns will be exclu excluded. So you get um, an iterator of the inner item of the option. Right. Yeah, that's right. And then we use a filter to filter out those that we don't want, which is the ones that ends in log. And then we iterate over those. Yeah, I think that actually makes a bit of sense. So now the question becomes, can I just, just do this? Just save the extra step. Let's exit out that one and run it. Yeah, so it seems to work fine. Uh, we could also just check, uh, have a look at results. And if we have a look at the standard result result, it should implement uh, oh, what's it called? I don't remember. It should yeah, I should probably implement iter or into iter into iter it. Blah, blah, blah one more time, into iterator. Yeah, send a result iter. Yeah, that's one. A reference to the OK variant of a result. The iterator yields one value if the result is OK, otherwise none. Yes. So this is basically does what we want. Right. So this flat maps it to just the their entries that are actually available to us. And then we'll filter out those three that we don't want and iterate over those. Yeah, I think this is actually a bit more readable because uh, it pretty clearly states here what we're doing. We're reading the path, we're reading the, the directory. We're flat mapping all, all the directory entries, basically just getting the ones that aren't erroring and then filtering them. So when we get here, it's very clear what we want to do. When we get the config path, we're going to push the new file, the file name in question and move it. Uh, right, uh, if sim above ensures that the file name does not return a none. Um, so that's not true in both cases anymore. It, there's no if statement anymore, and it doesn't actually return a... We don't use unwrap anymore either way. Anyway, so that should go too. Yeah, I like this a lot better. It doesn't indent as much, and I think it's pretty clear what's going on. First, you filter out the entries and then you operate on them. I think that's pretty, pretty good.
I think this is clearer and, and better to read. We'll just have to see what Stefan says, the maintainer of this project. He might, um, he might disagree. I don't know. But yeah, I think this is, uh, I think this is good. I actually, actually like where this ended up. So we'll just do this, and yeah, I think this looks a lot cleaner. Yeah, I like this a lot better. And this one also references the new path, uh, which is good. So yeah, this looks pretty good. Right, uh, as I mentioned, I don't want to sit around typing that the message on stream. Um, but I'm going to make a peer of this pretty soon, uh, or rather right after the stream ends. So you'll be able to... Um, jump online and see the uh, result of that as soon as I am um, done typing. So yeah, thanks for watching the stream and I uh, hope to see you again. Bye bye.